हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवत पुराणम कैंटो नंबर सिक्स चैप्टर नंबर सेवनटीन मदर पार्वती कर सस चित्र केतु सेवनटीन चैप्टर इज समरेज एज फॉलोस दिस चैप्टर डिस्क्राइब्स चित्र केतु रिसीविंग द बॉडी ऑफ एन असुरा हर डीमान बिकॉज ऑफ जोकिंग विथ लॉर्ड शिव After personally talking with Supreme Personality Godhead, King Chitraketu enjoyed life in his airplane with the women of the Vidyadara planet. Engaging in the congregation and chanting of the holy glories of the Lord, he began flying his plane and traveling in outer space. One day while traveling like this, he wandered into the bowers of Sumeru mountain, where he came upon Lord Shiva embracing Parvati, surrounded by an assembly of Siddhas, Charanas and great sages. Seeing Lord Shiva in that situation, Chitraketu laughed very loudly, but Parvati became very angry at him and cursed him because of this curse. Chitraketu later appeared as a demon, Vritra Asura. Chitraketu, however, was not at all afraid of Parvati's curse, and thus he spoke as follows: Everyone in human society enjoys happiness and distress according to his past deeds, and in this way travels in the material world. Therefore, no one is responsible for his happiness and distress. One is controlled by the influence of the material nature in the material world. Yet one thinks himself the doer of everything in this material world, which is made of the external energy of the Supreme Lord. One is sometimes cursed and sometimes favored, and thus he sometimes enjoys in the upper planetary systems and sometimes suffers in the lower planets. But all these situations are the same because they are within this material world. None of these positions has any factual existence, for all of them are temporary. The supreme person of God is the ultimate controller because the material world is created, maintained, and annihilated under his control. While he nonetheless remains neutral to these different transformations of the material world in time and space, the material energy, material external energy, of the supreme person of God is in charge of this material world. The Lord helps the world by creating situations for the living entities within it. And Chitraketu spoke in this way. All the members in the great assembly in which Lord Shiva and Parvati were present were astonished. Then Lord Shiva began speaking about the devotees of the Lord. A devotee is neutral in all conditions of life, whether in the heavenly planets or hellish planets, whether liberated from the material world or conditioned by it, and whether blessed with happiness or subject to distress. These are all merely dualities created by the external energy, being influenced by the external energy. The living entity accepts a gross and subtle body, material body, and in this illusory position, he apparent, apparently suffers miseries. Although everyone is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, so-called demigods consider themselves independent lords, and in this way, they are misled from misunderstanding that all living entities are part of the Supreme. This chapter concludes by glorifying the devotee and the Supreme Person of God. In text number one, Sri Lakshmi Goswami continued. Said of after offering obeisances to the direction from which Ananta, the supreme person of God, in, had disappeared, Chitraketu began traveling in outer space as head of the Vidyadharas, being praised by great sages and saints and by the inhabitants of Siddha Loka and Charana Loka. Chitraketu, the most powerful mystic yogi, um, wandered about enjoying life for millions of years with bodily strength and senses free from deterioration. He traveled within the valleys of Sumeru mountain, which is the place of perfection for various kinds of mystic power. In those valleys, he enjoyed life with the women of Vidyadhara Loka by chanting the glories of the Supreme Lord Hari. One time, while King Chitraketu was traveling in outer space on a brilliantly effulgent airplane given to him by Lord Vishnu, he saw Lord Shiva surrounded by Siddhas and Charanas. Lord Shiva was sitting in an assembly of great saintly persons and embracing Parvati on his lap with his arm. Chitraketu laughed loudly and spoke within the hearing of Parvati. Chitraketu said, "Lord Shiva, the spiritual master of the general populace, is the best of all living entities who have accepted material bodies. He enunciates the system of religion. Yet how wonderful it is that he is embracing his wife, Parvati." In the midst of an assembly of great saintly persons, Lord Shiva, whose hair is matted on his head, has certainly undergone great austerities and penances. 
Indeed, he is the president in the assembly of strict followers of Vedic principles. Nandilas is seated with his wife on his lap in the midst of saintly persons and is embracing her as if he were a shameless, ordinary human being. Ordinary conditions persons generally embrace their wives and enjoy their company in solitary places. How wonderful is that Lord Mahadeva, although great master of austerity, is embracing his wife openly in the midst of an assembly of great saints? Srila Sukadeva Goswami continued, My dear King, after hearing Chitraketu's statement, Lord Shiva, for the most powerful personality, whose knowledge is fathomless, simply smiled and remained silent, and all the members of the assembly followed the Lord by not saying anything. Not knowing the prowess of Lord Shiva and Parvati, Chitraketu strongly criticized them. Uh, his statements were not at all pleasing. And therefore, the goddess Parvati, being very angry, spoke as follows to Chitraketu, who thought himself better than Lord Shiva in controlling the senses. The goddess Parvati said, Alas, has this upstart now received a post from which to punish shameless persons like us? Has he been appointed ruler, carrier of the rod of punishment? Is he now the only master of everything? Alas, Lord Brahma, who has taken his birth from the lotus flower, does not know the principles of religion, nor do the great saints like Brugu and Narada, nor the four Kumaras headed by Sanat Kumara, Manu and Kapila have also forgotten the religious principles. I suppose it to be because of this that they have not tried to stop Lord Shiva from behaving improperly. This Chitraketu is the lowest of Kshatriyas, for he has impudently overridden Brahma and the other demigods by insulting Lord Shiva upon whose lotus feet they always meditate. Lord Shiva is personified religion and the spiritual master of the entire world and therefore Chitraketu must be punished. This person is puffed up because of his achievements thinking I am the best. He does not deserve to approach the shelter of Lord Vishnu's lotus feet which are worshipped by all saintly persons. For his impudent, thinking himself greatly important, O impudent one, my dear son, now take birth in a low, sinful family of demons, so that you will not commit such an offence again toward exalted saintly persons in this world. Srila Sukadeva Goswami continued, My dear King Parikshit, when Chitraketu was cursed by Parvati, he descended from his airplane, bowed before her with great humility, and pleased her completely. Chitraketu said, My dear mother, with my own hands folded together, I accept the curse upon me. I do not mind the curse for happiness and distress are given by the demigods as a result of one's past deeds. Deluded by ignorance, the living entity wanders in the forest of this material world, enjoying the happiness and distress resulting from his past deeds. Everywhere and at, at all times, therefore, my dear mother, neither you nor am I to be blamed for this incident. In this material world, neither the living entity himself nor others, friends and enemies are the cause of material happiness and distress, but because of gross ignorance, the living entity thinks that he and others are the cause. This material world resembles the waves of a constantly flowing river. Therefore, what is a curse and what is a favor? What are the heavenly planets and what are the hellish planets? What is actual happiness? What is actually happiness? And what is actually distress? Because the waves flow constantly, None of them has an eternal effect. Supreme Person like Godhead is one, unaffected by the conditions of the material world. He creates all the conditioned souls by his own personal potency. Because of being contaminated by the material energy, the living entity is pushed into, put into ignorance and thus into different conditions of bondage. Sometimes by knowledge, the living entity is given liberation in Satoguna and Rajoguna is subjected to happiness and distress. Supreme Person of God is equally dis disposed toward all living entities. Therefore, no one is very dear to him and no one is great enemy for him. No one is his friend and no one is his relative. Being unattached to the material world, he, is ha he has no affection for so-called happiness or hatred for so-called distress. Two terms, happiness and distress, are relative. Since the Lord is always happy for him, there is no question of distress. Although Supreme Lord is unattached to our happiness and distress according to karma and although no one is his enemy or favorite he creates pious and impious activities through the agency of his material potency 
Thus, for the continuation of the materialistic way of life, he creates happiness and distress, good fortune and bad, bondage and liberation, birth and death. O mother, you are now unnecessarily angry, but since my all my happiness and distress are destined by my past activities, I do not plead to be excused or relieved from your curse. Although what I have said is not wrong, please let whatever you think is wrong to be pardoned. Srila Sukadeva Goswami continued, Makeo King Parikshit, subduer of the enemy, after Chitaketu satisfied Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati, he boarded his airplane and left as they looked on. When Lord Shiva and Parvati saw that Chitraketu, although informed of the curse, was unafraid, they smiled, being fully astonished by his behavior. Thereafter, in the presence of the great sage Narada, the demons, the inhabitants of Siddhaloka, and his personal associates, Lord Shiva, who is most powerful, spoke to his wife Parvati while they all listened. Lord Shiva said, My dear beautiful Parvati, have you seen the greatness of the Vaishnavas? Being servants of the servants of the Supreme Person of God in Hari, they are great souls and are not interested in any kind of material happiness. Devotees solely engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Person of God in Narayana never fear any condition of life. For them, the heavenly planets, liberation and hellish planets are all the same. For such devotees are interested only in the service of the Lord. Because of the actions of the Supreme Lord's external, ex, Lord's external energy, the living entities 